Well, under the rule of the Communist Party, artists in the former Soviet Union had a choice. Create art in support of the government or face being labeled an enemy of the state. Now, despite that oppression, some artists remained true to their vision. And thanks to the dedication of one man, many of their works were preserved. Igor Savitsky rescued 40,000 banned works of art and hid them in a museum nearly 2,000 miles from Moscow. His story is the basis for the new independent lens documentary, The Desert of Forbidden Art, which debuts on PBS tonight. Right now, we are joined by the filmmakers, Amanda Pope and Shavdar Georgiev. Thanks for being with us. You're, you're welcome. Thank you for um, broadcasting news about our film. Well, let's talk about the film. Yeah, very happy to have you here. Amanda, what brought Savitsky's story to your attention, and why did you decide to make a documentary about it? Well, first and foremost, this art is absolutely gorgeous. Um, we found out about it really uh, while we were shooting, doing another um, short documentary portraits of emerging leaders, and this was in 2000. And it took us three years before we could even get access to Uzbekistan. The film has taken us six years to make. <laughs> now, let me ask you this. In looking at these paintings, which our audience is taking a look at right now, why was the government so intent on stopping this kind of art? Because much of it doesn't appear to be political in any way. Uh, it's a very complicated uh, question, <laughs> not easy to answer, but we can tell you the facts. In October last year, the director of the museum was, uh, museum was prohibited to travel uh, to the United States for the opening of the film at the National Gallery of Art in Washington, D.C., which we thought is going to be an incredible celebration of Uzbekistan, of the museum, and of her achievements as a director. Uh, she's been the director of the museum for the last 27 years. And then a month later, with a 48-hour warning, one of the museum buildings where there are more than 2,000 paintings things on the walls uh, and some of the storage rooms and the restoration lab had to be evacuated and the building is scheduled for demolition with no plans for a new building for the museum. So when you ask what is so uh, politically un, you know, unacceptable about these works of art, you may well ask that question. I mean, they were not, um, they really weren't political. Uh, and, but it's all in the eyes of the beholder. And even now, you may say, well, these, these paintings were done in the 20s and 30s. This was under the Soviet system. Why would Uzbekistan, which is now an independent country, why would they have any objections to that. Well, you get a sense of that in the film. Savitsky was not only able to get Soviet money to build a museum in the middle of the desert in Uzbekistan, but another one of the enigmas here, one of the questions that's still being asked, he was also able to get government money to buy these works of art that the government, in fact, wanted to destroy. How was that possible? He was a fox. He was just totally a fox and a very charming fox. And, and you know, where his museum was, I mean, it was like you had a museum in, in North Dakota, not to be insulting to North Dakota, um, but it was in the boonies. And so that, you know, if he wanted to take some art and if he wanted to rescue paintings and go to this really obscure place, people really let him do it because he, he was was eccentric. They liked him. Savitsky was uh, running the only museum in the Soviet Union that was exhibiting forbidden art purchased on government money. And I want to ask you about that, Shavdar, because how was he able to trick the Soviet government for so long without being caught? Well, he had the support of the local people. Uh, you always have to make sure that the local people love you. And he was collecting for 10 years the folk crafts, these incredible folk crafts of the Karakalpak people who are nomads living in that region. And uh, one day he brought uh, this incredible folk craft uh, collection that he was storing in his garage to the office of the local communist leader who was a Karakalpak. And when he saw the incredible love that Savitsky had for the Karakalpak arts, he gave him a carte blanche uh, and closed his eyes to all the other activities that Savitsky was doing. And he gave him money to make a museum that he opened in 1966.
I mean, one of the fascinating things about this story is there are so many uh, contradictions here. And, you know, uh, I mean, to only think of the Soviet living under the Soviet system as a, a, a negative, a tragic um, thing is, is, not, um, is not true. We wanted to show people the early days of the, the Soviet uh, system and how, how inspiring it was to artists. This is when they painted in the 20s and 30s. Not and only the backstory, but another fascinating part of this is that this artwork is worth a lot of money. One piece was sold at auction for $480,000. I want to get to the funding for the museum because it seems like there uh, may be a situation where that museum is in dire straits. So what happens if there's not enough funding to keep it open? What happens to all the artwork? Well, just to give you an idea, a museum uh, curator in Uzbekistan makes $50 a month. So that kind of gives you an idea that these women who run the museum, and it's mostly women, they love their work and they're completely dedicated to what they're doing. Uh, the museum is well protected, it is guarded, but the fact remains the fact that these works are not properly taken care of. 97% of the collection needs restoration, uh, and none of that work is being done at the moment. And uh, the best way to help the museum is for an organization called Friends of the Nukus Museum, that is an international organization uh, uh, gathering support uh, all over the world for this collection, which is an incredible world class treasure of art. Well, you two have brought it to us, and we do appreciate the insight. We want to thank you both for being with us today. The Desert of Forbidden Art debuts on PBS tonight at 10 p.m., so be sure to check your local listings.